Today we're talking about a really important topic for all website owners, image optimization. We all know that images are a crucial part of a website, but did you know that large unoptimized images can be the main culprit behind a slow website? That is why it's so important to optimize images for page speed and Google. So in this video, we're gonna cover the best image optimization techniques that will improve your performance, as well as address the page speed insights image warnings that you may see. As we all know, Google is a significant revenue source for most businesses, so it's crucial to rank well. And since page speed is an important ranking factor, by optimizing your images, you're giving a speed boost to your website. But why is that? Why are images so important for page speed? Well, according to Google, images make up the largest number of HTTP requests per page, which can slow down the loading of your website. See, when a visitor lands on your site, your browser has to request and download some of the files to render the content. An HTTP request is made to the server for every single file. That means the more heavy resources you have, the more requests your browser will need to make. So that way, by optimizing your images and making them smaller, you will reduce the size of HTTP requests, resulting in a faster loading site. And as we all know, a slow loading website also leads to a higher bounce rate, as you can see by this screenshot that was shared by Google. So having a slow website leads to a higher bounce rate, which leads to lost revenue. Now let's talk about the impact of images on Google PageSpeed Insights. PageSpeed Insights is a tool powered by by Lighthouse that analyzes the content on a web page, including images. And it's important you note there are two page speed metrics impacted by images, the largest contentful paint and the first contentful paint. First contentful paint is related to the first text and image elements being rendered to the screen. Largest contentful paint marks the point when the main content has been loaded. By the way, if you wanna learn more about these metrics, we have a video breaking down the core web vitals where you can learn even more. Now, let's go over what page speed recommendations you will see related to images, and then we're gonna cover how you can actually fix them. Number one is to serve images in the next gen formats. Google recommends converting images to WebP or AVIF because those formats offer better compression than JPEG or PNG. Compressing images also means faster downloads, less data consumption, and an overall faster site. In the example we have on screen right now, I could save almost 135 kilobytes by converting my JPEG image to WebP. Number two is to efficiently encode images. Efficiently encoding images means reducing an image file size while still maintaining great quality. If the potential savings are four kilobytes or greater, Google will automatically flag the image as optimizable. Three, defer off-screen images. An additional way to optimize images for performance is to defer off-screen images and apply the lazy loading script to the images below the fold. The goal here is to prioritize the critical resources first and load the hidden images later. Number four, properly size images. Another recommendation you may see from Google is to properly size the images, especially when serving them on a mobile device. In the screenshot I'm showing you on screen, I could save 50 kilobytes by resizing and optimizing my image for the mobile devices. Number five, serve static assets with an efficient cache pop policy. HTTP caching can speed up your page load time on repeat visits to your site. So what you'll see is Google flags all static resources that aren't cached. So now that you know those, let's go over eight performance techniques that you can implement to optimize your images for Google. Convert images to WebP. One of the most efficient ways to optimize your images for Google is to convert them to WebP. You can do this by using a WordPress plugin like Imagify. It will create a WebP version of the image resulting in better compression and optimization. Now, if you don't wanna use a plugin, you'll find many free tools online like Convertio or EasyGIF. The only downside is you need to perform a few extra steps to use those methods. You're gonna have to upload your images, download them in WebP, and then put them into your WordPress library. Second is to compress images. Compressing an image means to significantly reduce its size and decrease its cost of storage. Some of the most popular WordPress plugins to compress images without losing quality are as follows. Imagify, which also has a smart compression feature and the possibility to bulk compress images, as well as Optimal, Compressed JPEG and PNG or Tiny PNG, EWWW, and Short Pixel. You could also use design software like Photoshop or Lightroom to compress images, but note that the quality may be altered there. Number three, resize images. Google recommends resizing images properly, especially for mobile devices. For this, you can use a software like Sketch, Preview, or GIMP to modify the size in the images and reduce their weight. 
Going back to a plugin we talked about earlier, you can also use a Magify to resize larger images. There is even an option to automatically optimize the larger images as well. Number four, set image dimensions. PageSpeed suggests setting an explicit width and height on image elements. The reason why is to reduce layout shifts and improve the cumulative layout shift metric, which is another core of vital metric. To set an image dimension, make sure that your width and height HTML tags have a value as shown on screen. Number five, implement lazy loading. Lazy loading is one of the most efficient ways to optimize your images for Google and performance. Why? Well, it's because you tell the browser to only download the images that the visitor is viewing. To apply lazy loading to your images, you can use a free WordPress plugin like Lazy Load by WP Rocket, and you can also implement lazy loading manually by adding the following tag on your image as shown on screen. Number six, enable browser caching. Caching is another Google recommendation for page speed because it allows images to be served faster to the users. Browser caching can help to reduce the server load by reducing the number of HTTP requests per page as well. Now, Google suggests that you should be using a WordPress plugin to implement your caching. And one of the best caching plugins is WP Rocket, the channel you are currently watching. Our plugin automatically applies 80% of the web performance best practices. It has a simple interface and it's a quick and easy setup. Number seven is to take advantage of a CDN. Using an image CDN significantly reduces your traffic costs and increases your grade on Google PageSpeed Insights. It does this because it optimizes the way images are delivered to the visitors no matter where they are in the world. So thanks to this image optimization technique, the amount of transferred data is reduced. Now, setting up a CDN from scratch can be overwhelming. You'll need to deal with things like DNS records and CNAME fields. So if you prefer an automatic installation, you may want to try Rocket CDN. They do the heavy lifting for you and configure the CDN as well. Number eight, use SVG graphics when possible. One of the most valuable features of SVG for performance is that the graphic can be scaled without losing quality. If you didn't know, SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, and it's based on XML. Behind the scenes, this format is equation in mathematics, making it easier to scale without ever compromising the pixels. So hopefully this video has given you what you need to know about image optimization and how to go about fixing any image optimization issues you may have ran into. And as you mentioned before, the plugin Imagify can help you out with a lot of these issues you may face. Now, if you found this video helpful, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And also, like I said before, if you want to learn more about the core vital metrics, check out this playlist right here. Goodbye and have a good day.